Hello and welcome back to my channel, Casablanca Cargo. This is Kathy and this is Santa's Workshop Saturdays. For a few things to turn into vintage looking with the tea bag. glitter finish so it's a sealer basically it's very runny now I don't know it's actually gonna work but it might <laughs> I don't know the, where are you gonna come out will you work I don't know but I have these little let's see I'm gonna need for my project these are little beads I made with magazine The drying apparatus. <laughs> I'll turn them a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna let those dry. So here are my composition notebooks, or a composition notebook that I split in half. And each one is 
individualized with the closure ribbon and a few things are different inside. This one is going to my husband's aunt and she lives alone. So that is geared towards her. And this is the front cover. And I used a tea bag on a uh, this is actually a catalog image and then this is a little 3D Jolie's 3D sticker that I took the the 3D sticker off the back of and then this is another project that I showed earlier the um, coffee sleeve with the Starbucks it's a Starbucks coffee sleeve with the um, Christmas tree napkin decoupaged on top and then because she likes Starbucks I selected the one that has the eyes you can see her her eyes from the sleeve and then these beads had are the ones that were were handmade so my original thought was to put the coffee sleeves like a Christmas tree well this thing was too small for the size of the coffee sleeves sort of took over the whole thing so I changed it to the collage and um, let's see I could flip through and let me show you this the other one they're both well you saw in the earlier video that I used the same magazine or catalog image across the the whole page of the composition notebook and then I cut it in half but the insides are decorated differently but this one is for my sister-in-law and her husband they are empty nesters so that is how their book is geared <laughs> geared towards them and being empty nesters so let's let's start with I'll move this to the side first I'm going to start with this one to auntie now I don't think they actually watch my videos but um, I'm still going to try to surprise them <laughs> if they do so there's some things I may not I may not share so this this um, closure fabric closure is a piece of fabric cotton fabric and I created the patchwork of the fab, uh, flannel the plaid flannels that I have and I cut them into rough strips and if you, I mean, I want it to be very uh, eclectic and boho and just, you know, like somebody just had these things and they wanted to, to make them into something, you know, something beautiful, basically. And so I took strips of flannel and I, I didn't really measure exactly I just use my scissors even if you want them straight and you want them exact use your rotary cutter and your cutting mat and you know a ruler if if that's the way you want to go I mean this is this was my choice I wanted it to be more boho and so I cut them into strips lengthwise sewed them all together then turned it and then cut through those strips so that I would only have a little section of of the flannel to make my my ribbon and then I sewed them all together and then decided on the length of the cotton and then as you can see crazy stitched it actually just zigzagged it but went back and forth and back and forth and then I added the lace elements and some um, this underneath the shiny bit is this Uh, yarn and you can get this on clearance at Michael's or at a you know thrift store and it's got shiny shiny elements in it so I put that on and then I put on this one I used some of this green underneath and then I put the lace on top and just zigzagged it all down I didn't I didn't uh, change my foot I did use a, a jean needle though 
to make sure that it would get through all the weird layers and the little strips of yarn and things. And added a piece of lace right here on the edge. And then on the edge, this is um, shiny. Let's see, I hope it works. It's just a piece of shiny uh, packing, or not, you know, gift wrap ribbon. And I just put that on the edge. And so it just ties around. And the inside now, let's go to the, let's go to the, uh, the book. What do we call this? A book? A journal? Well, I fashioned it in a way of sort of like the 12 days of Christmas advent calendar kind of a thing because I plan to put little tiny gifts inside. So when you open it, there's this, I, I added this um, band of paper. It says made with love and hello. And then I still need to put something on the, the cover here. I'm still thinking about it. I still have, I would need to get these out probably this week, but um, I'm still thinking about what to write down. And I did put, let's see if I can hold this up. I put some of the um, photo framers or, or uh, you know, where you would put a photo on four corners. I use them to cover the corners. Okay. Okay, I'm going to flip through this one, and then I'll do a more in-depth uh, look into that one. one is geared towards empty nesters and so that is it is more focused on them as a couple here's the cover and this is a catalog image that I showed you the video of with the tea bag over it of a truck this piece is a whole bunch of scraps of a lot of my projects, probably all the projects I've, I've done, uh, sewing projects from the last three years. I kept putting my little tiddly bits <laughs> of stuff into a bag and so I decided to reach in there. I dumped it all out and picked out fabric and I backed it onto a piece of, um, one whole piece of fabric, kind of like this, this whole idea. This is a piece that I cut off um, when it was I was trying to make it, you know, fit the fit the the black edge or the binder binding, um, and so I had to cut some of it off. So what happened was I used glue stick and put a little bit of glue in the middle just to get the the little bits of fabric onto that one piece of of um, cotton and then I took a piece of netting I got this a long time ago at the thrift store it was 25 cents I mean wow you know and I put that on top of the strip on top of these little pieces of fabric and then I just zigzagged it down as you can see I just zigged, zigzagged all over it, you know, back and forth and turn, back and forth and turn to get them all, all sewn down. And then I used fabric glue to glue it onto the black binding. And then I added, um, this is more decorative ribbon that, um, I think I got this at Marshall's. It's just for, um, wrapping gifts and I used it in my craft project. The cover then is, the truck is the, what I showed before, my little clip of the catalog image with 
the I use the matte antique matte Mod Podge and that's what gives it more of a vintage look to it and I also sewed around it with some metallic thread I got I got this metallic thread in a in a package of threads at a rummage sale and this is really good uh, quality Guterman now the thing about metallic thread though is it doesn't want to probably because of my machine it's just a little brother you know but it won't it won't uh, <laughs> free motion you know it doesn't like to go around a lot because it'll break so I just use it for decorative straight stitching and I put that I put that around the the um, the image let's see if you can see that okay I was thinking of making a Christmas tree out of my coffee sleeves but this cover was too small for that so instead I just took a square of the Christmas tree and I used green distress ink all over it and then I used a black sharpie the thicker one went around the edge and if you do that I suggest going from the back first so you don't go into the picture but I used um, then I used my handmade beads that I showed in my little clip and just put three in and I sewed those in with a needle and some a little bit thicker thread and again with the fabric tack it's glued in there shouldn't shouldn't come a should not come apart but they still move a little bit like Christmas ornaments I thought I thought that was kind of a different idea and here's the back you can see more Christmas fabric a little bit of shiny some of the flannel some denim just these are a lot of them are just little bits of fabric I had uh, saved collected and then by putting the net netting over it I made a whole different piece of fabric and then here's the back with the Santas now going forward I would turn the Santas so that they would face this way but you know live and learn <laughs> so let's go inside so on the inside then I have covered the inside cover and then on uh, the first video I did all the strips lengthwise of the composition notebook and then I cut it in half so then I had some extra um, paper left so I cut more strips but these are only six inches long and that way the book doesn't um, gator open just sitting there you know just by itself it should be able just to be able to fit into a drawer and you can use it um, look at it whatever years to come if they want to okay, so I covered the back this is some more Christmas paper from I have this I had a 12 by 12 that I've been working going through it's this um, this is a 6 by 6 version of the 12 by 12 that I had it's called Jolly it is by American Crafts and I still have a lot of paper left in here but I use the eight the 12 by 12 and cut it down and this is like I think these are supposed to be like trees in the forest so we're going a little bit more rustic with this one rustic glammy <laughs> this is my introduction page I still have to figure out what I want to write in there but um, yeah I'm gonna try to get these out this week so that they can use them during the month of December because these are advent uh, like a calendar and also like a 12 days of Christmas so in that regard I only have 12 numbers throughout the month till no, uh, December 25th so on these pages then this one I ran out of of the cars so I just used some brown craft paper for the sides and the numbers I have added with uh, I just stapled them in and these numbers I used a simple 
stencil. I think you can get these at the dollar store. And a white gel pen. And I would just put it on the, these are um, Project Life cards, which were a really good weight for this. They don't bend as easily as uh, some scrapbook paper. And then I didn't have to back the thin scrapbook paper, paper onto heavier card stock. This is just working on its own. So I'd put the stencil, color it in, lift it, and it looks like chalkboard. And I really like the look. I also like to, to use a little bit of the black in this to just sort of uh, ground it, you know, ground it <laughs> so it doesn't, all the colors, you know, it's just sort of like a grounding um, effect with, with the black and also the chalkboard effect I thought was neat. So then I used stencils on the opposite page of whatever the decorative page was. And that I, this is the only thing that I bought new was a, the Tim Holtz stencil uh, Christmas. This is the back, what it looks like. We're going to use the stamps in a little bit and it has two kind of wintry theme Christmas theme. There's snowflakes and then the, the leaves and the berries and the acorns. And so, and this is another one. It was just a stencil on its own. There's no stamps with this one. And that's what I used here. I just dipped my blending brush into different Distress Ink colors and went back and forth. I also used a hard surface underneath so that it would make the right kind of impression with with the um, Distress Ink. And so some of these now I have, let's move these out of the way. Some of these I have used um, this little piece of paper comes from a sheet, a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And I've cut them up, but they, they have little sentiments and little pictures and things. And so I used my the antique antique deco 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 edge um, scissors just cut them out and then distress ink them and back them sometimes I backed them onto more cardstock or scrapbook paper or I just didn't you know it just depended on on what I felt was needed this one I put little elves and I backed it onto uh, scrapbook paper now this one says not a creature was stirring not even a mouse this part I'll show you this part it's in a different okay this is another little Christmas six by six that I've had and I'm I'm almost I'm almost out of it but these this little sentiment not a creature was stirring at the top here which is usually your throwaway part when you when you take the paper out has a little bit of that story um, and so I cut it up and distressed the edges and I used it in my little book and I'll I think I've I said this before but I'm going to say it again I'll just use this part I'm going to put little gifts in here that's why the numbers so 12 gifts 12 days of Christmas and I will wrap it and put it into this little ledge here that I have uh, left open and that way they can open something when that number comes up or they can open it up you know <laughs> all at once but here's here's the snowflake stencil just put it in the corner it leaves it open they can write in there if they want to if they don't feel like it it's just decorative you know there's nothing really they have to worry about this was another little piece of this one called Kringle and Company, and I, I I just love this this pad. Just this little these little squares here are where I got these things and just cut them out. 
and they're very vintage looking so it, I thought it looked really good in this book now this is where I took the page to my sewing machine and I did some loops and then I took that metallic thread and just ran it straight across because I wasn't gonna wasn't gonna be messing with that and trying to make it you know <laughs> mess it up and then I made little corners with my um, I made these little corners with this this punch I got this in a thrift thrift store bag didn't know what it was till I tried it out and they're little picture frame corners and I thought that was a good way to just finish off the page and also let me just say with the numbers I chose a um, punch settled on a punch and every one of them are the same shape uniformity but this one has a little bit of the swirl because that was on the project life card and I thought you know it's not it's not too uh, way out there and it worked so this is just a planner sticker and I put that there because it blended with the colors on the table really well and they can just write you know date plan whatever here's some more of that stencil this green paper is from a catalog that Amazon sent me I know I don't, I don't know why they did but I'm glad they did because I cut it up and put it in this book both books so I just keep looking here now this is from the King Arthur um, flower baking company that was just a picture and there this is another catalog and then these are planner stickers and then a little bit of of um, Kringle and company just used my decorative scissors some more of the sewing and then I did use a solid piece from this pad and then I just wrapped it wrapped the edges around and then I wrapped the edges around and then finished it with the little photo frame corners this one had different names on the catalog image so I took the scrapbook um, that little sentiment at the top the little story and it said the stockings were hung by the chimney with care and I just put them on there and then added some planner stickers just to cover up if there was a letter or a number or you know you can order it here <laughs> here's another planner sticker um, it says bake this bake cookies and then this is just a sticker I had in my stash there's some more stenciling this is different this is a har harlequin stencil i have just for something a little different this is that amazon page this is another catalog page it has two slippers two sets of slippers and then this is part of that that um, 12 by 12 sheet of sentiments this is just one line of stitching kind of crooked but oh well it's not perfect but it is handmade and made with love and this is more of that Amazon this was more of the Amazon and I turned it cut the fox and the owl and put them together and just made a little collage page some more of the sewing here's um, King Arthur flower another sentiment this is a remembrance uh, tree this is the page where uh, we stop and reflect and on the those that have have uh, gone and are no longer with us and you know it's just a moment to to think about them and and in the season and then this one is Christmas Eve and it's another uh, catalog page and then I just covered if there was a number or a letter or whatever and just covered it up and this is the Christmas Eve page and then this is the Christmas page and down here more of that sentiment or more of that you know this little page had all kinds of goodies to cut out and that's where I got the do not open before December 25th all right so like I said I'm gonna put little 
little flattish gifts in here and then once those come out they can start putting Christmas cards there's my trusty tag I say you got Christmas cards you can start just putting them in or if they fit this way you can put them in the little ledge you know little ledge like that and then it can hold their Christmas cards I don't get that many cards anymore everybody just does e email or you know online but um, yeah so that's that's uh, for the empty nester and then this one is for my aunt that lives on her own by herself and yeah so here's a list of my ideas of what I want to put in and I will write down or uh, right right I will pr put that list in the description box below as well if you can think of anything else I, I you know racked my brain and one night I'm going through Amazon trying to you know little gifts little tiny gifts you know uh, another one I just thought of is earrings you know I don't wear earrings but maybe earrings or jewelry or you know something that it doesn't matter uh, if it's it's gonna it's gonna expand the book anyway you know as you put the things in but once they come out then they should just just remain like this so one thing that I wanted to do today um, in regards to one of the smaller gifts okay so this is a part of the video where I'm going to show you how to make ticket strips when you do not have tickets and I want to thank Chris and Junk Journal Inspirations group for this idea. I had made a video a while back how to make a ticket strip and I had tickets and she didn't have tickets and she came up with this brilliant idea of using stamps that she had and created tickets and I loved it when I wanted to make a strip of tickets for these books that I've made, I wanted them to be used as tags on gifts or, you know, tucked into a card or, you know, however they wanted to use them. So I bought this Tim Holtz stencil and stamp, stamp and stencil set, and specifically for the stamps. Okay, this is stays on olive green. Let's see how this works. Okay. Side swatch label for stacked pads. Hmm. Okay, so you can use a ruler, go down your lines, or I'm going to go with the flow. 
and I'm just gonna use my sharpie just in case it bleeds through let it bleed through to this side and I'm just gonna make marks like a ticket Now I'm going to mark where I want my circle to be punched. And then the cut line. I'm going to take a humble hole punch. Okay, I have some Distress Ink and Festive Berries. And there is how to make tickets when you only have stamps and you don't have tickets. Ticket stamps. Okay, thanks for joining me today. See you next week. Bye for now.